Hello friends and welcome back. A while ago I posted a video of me assembling a board for the Altair 8800 uh, that was supposed to be used for as an uh, IDE interface for the computer. I put it on hold due to time constraints but recently got back to it. In the last video we left off by installing all the components but the last IC, the 8255, since it was still in transit. Now that I have it with me, let's go ahead and install it and uh, that will complete the board. The board is now fully ready for us. There isn't much existing software available for it that would work out of the box, so we'll have to write our own bootloader using assembly code. The goal is to create a bootloader that will allow us to choose which drive on this board to boot from and then run the software that is stored on that chosen drive. Here we have a piece of software that will do just that. I will include a link to it in the description. The original software was actually taken from a Z80 monitor program and converted to Intel 8080. I then pulled out the necessary IDE initialization and copy code and created this bootloader from it. It contains very basic functionality and probably won't work with anything complex, but it will allow us to copy a specific amount of sectors from an IDE drive to the Altair RAM and then run the copy program uh, on the computer. The bootloader will be executed from location F00 hex, so we need to set the org uh, to that. The stack pointer will be initialized to 7FF0 hex and uh, will fill down words from there. The data from the drives will be copied to address 0 and fill up from there. Keep the size of the data in mind when loading it since there is a maximum that it will support. The bootloader will display a message asking which drive to load, uh, either drive A or drive B can be selected. Any other selection will return back to the menu. Once the drive is selected, the bootloader will copy the data from the drive to the Altair's RAM, starting at address 0. For now, it will only copy the first sector and then run the program from the start address once the copy is done. Let's go ahead and assemble this program and try it out on the Altair. I will use the uh, pretty 8080 assembler which you can find on GitHub, uh, link in the description. Um, this assembler is much easier to work with versus trying to assemble it directly in CPM. It does have some issues but it works for most cases. I will copy and paste the code into the assembler. Now we have an option to download the binary or the Intel hex version. There are other options as well but we will skip them for now. Since I will be testing it on a physical Altair, I want to use the Intel Hex version since we can uh, easily copy it over to the computer using Amon, the Altair monitor program. I have the Amon EEPROM installed in the 882SAOJP serial board, which we assembled in a previous video. Let's put it up and run the monitor program. We can then type in HLF00. This will copy the bytes that will come in over serial into RAM starting at, at address uh, F00 hex, which if you remember is where our bootloader starts at. On the external computer, which is connected to the Altair over serial, we'll use uh, the TerraTerm uh, program to send the Intel hex file to the Altair over serial. The aim on monitor program will show the progress of the upload while the file is being copied. Now we can select the address F00 hex on the front panel and run the computer from that address. Perfect. Let's try selecting drive A. As we can see, we get an error saying that the drive is not ready. That's because we have not added any drives to the IDE board. So let's do that now. Instead of using a real IDE drive, I will use a compact flash drive and an adapter that converts it to IDE. You can find this adapter and a CDF drive uh, on Amazon for under $10. Also, uh, the reason why we installed the headers for, in the lower footprint uh, for the drives was to support this adapter. Otherwise the adapter would have to be installed upside down for it to work. Now that we have a drive to attach to the IDE board, let's copy a test program to the CF drive. I will be using this adapter here which you can also find on Amazon for under $10. I will include a link to both of these in the description. This adapter allows us to connect the CF drive to a computer over USB. Let's go ahead and connect it to the Mac. You can also do this with the Windows but the commands might be different. 
In the terminal, we need to find the path of the disk that we just attached. We can use the disk util list command to list the disks that are connected to the computer. In my case, the CF drive is disk 4. Let's first unmount this disk with the unmount disk command. Be sure to specify the disk path when unmounting. Now we can copy our test program to the CF drive. But first, let's take a look at the test program that we're about to copy. The program listens to a serial input and relays back out anything that it receives. So if a key is typed on a terminal keyboard, it will show the character on the terminal screen. Let's go ahead and assemble this program and create a binary file that we can then copy to the CF drive. Back in the terminal, we can use the following command to copy the binary file that we just created uh, to the CF drive. Now that we've copied the program, uh, let's install the CF drive into the CF2 IDE adapter and the adapter into the IDE board. I'm going to load up the bootloader into RAM again, uh, as we did previously, and run the computer from the bootloader location. Let's select drive A again. There we have it. The program that we copied to the CF drive is not being executed on this computer. What I would like to do next is improve this bootloader process. Instead of having to load it up into memory using Amon, what if we add it to an EEPROM and have the computer boot from the EEPROM on startup? We can simply replace the Amon EEPROM with our own EEPROM. The one that I will be using is an Intel 2716 uh, 16 uh, kilobit EEPROM. We'll use a handy dandy EEPROM program that you can get from Amazon for a reasonable price. Before continuing, I'm going to modify the bootloader to run an address uh, F000 hex. This will give us more memory space to work with when booting from a drive. I will download a binary of this program. In the EEPROM programmer software, we can read the current EEPROM uh, to make sure that it's blank, and it looks like it is. Then load up the binary of the bootloader that we just downloaded. Finally, uh, go to the program and flash the EEPROM with the binary file. We can read it again to verify that it was written correctly. As we can see, the first few bytes seem to match our program. Let's install this EEPROM into the serial board and make sure that it's configured correctly. We also want to make sure that the jump start address is F000 hex, so the bulleter starts from there whenever the computer is powered on. Let's go ahead and power it on and run the bootloader. As before, we're prompted with the selection menu. Since we installed the test program into drive A, let's try booting from drive A. Awesome! Our program has been loaded and it seems to function as expected. I also went ahead and installed another program into drive B. So let's restart the computer and select to boot from drive B. This time the program simply states that drive B has been loaded. So now we can boot from either drive A or drive B. In a future video, I will try to get a CPM on one of these compact flash drives so we could boot uh, the operating system directly from an IDE drive instead of a floppy drive. It's a little more uh, complicated, but it's definitely possible. I would challenge you to try it out yourself. Let me know if you get it working. I don't think I've seen anyone do that before, so it might be a first. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, 
In a future video, I plan to connect the Altair to the internet, so make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, so you don't miss it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.